Uh, Dr. David Whitehouse joins me now. Strobotic, David, and Viper. Interesting stuff, this. Fascinating. Um, this is part, as you say, of uh, NASA going back to the moon. They still hope to put uh, the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024, although we think that's going to slip by a year or two. Uh, but this is a golf-size cart that's going to land at the south pole of the moon, probably on the rim of a crater called Shackleton. And it's no coincidence that the crater that uh, is at the south pole of the moon is called Shackleton. Um, and also, we know there's ice there. We've known this for over 20 years, that in the lunar dust, there are shards of ice. And that's what this volatile rover is going to examine, because that ice is very important for future bases. It feels like we're doing a chemistry show tonight, actually, David. We were just talking to a food processing expert, talking to us, talking to us about how fertiliser production yields a byproduct in the form of carbon dioxide. Uh, but the chemistry on the moon, you, there are no second chances. You've got to make it work. And if your people are up there on a moon base uh, and they need the staples to support life, and, and ice, ice in the, or, you know, water, clearly a key part of that. Well, that's right. I mean, the moon base is... Uh... It's going to be something that's going to be developed over this, this decade. By the end of the decade, there will be people living on the moon in six-month rotations. And the ice is a vital component of, of their life. Now, if um, things went wrong, they could get back in a couple of days. So there will that always will be built into the moon base uh, scenario. But the ice from the poles of the moon um, will provide drinking water, will provide irrigation, uh, but will also, when they're turned into liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, will provide rocket fuel. And this is going to be, you know, a major part of the life of a, their Shackleton crater um, coming up there, a major part of the life of the moon base. And also, the fact that this is at the South Pole is important because um, the South Pole is these, it's a land of deep shadows. In fact, there are some craters at the South Pole, Shackleton included, where the sun never shines. It's colder in those craters than on the surface of P Pluto, the most distant um, planet. And that's why the ice has accumulated there. It's never been burnt off by the sun. And this is a land where the sun is a, it's, it's a wonderful land of shadows. If you were standing at the south pole of the moon, where this viper is going to land, where the base is going to be built, where the first footprints going back are going to be set, um, you would see the Earth in one position in the sky. And over a month, it would go through a series of phases, crescent, mm -hmm. full, uh, etc. Right. But the sun, the sun would walk all the way around the horizon. So the shadows, very deep, very long, would move around like the hands of a clock. Ah. It's a wonderful, evocative, significant part of the moon, which we're all going to get to know when we land there. Apollo 11 landed at the equator, the Sea of Tranquility. This is a very different part of the moon.